Hello everyone, this is Rebecca from We Expat TV. This is our first video、um, that we're going to present to you guys, and today we are going to talk about five tips to study Japanese at home while not coming to Japan at this moment. So, under this pandemic, I wonder everybody actually h a v e some extra time in hand, and、uh, we can definitely work on our Japanese at home without coming to Japan with some of the tips that we、um, actually received from our team members at Leverages. And then、um, some of us are from Korea, some of us are from Taiwan. China, and we, some of us are from other countries who speak English as well. So, we think that、um, this video might help some of you、um, that are interested in studying Japanese but、um, doesn't really know、um, how to start. So,、um, today we are going to talk about some of the tips that I have and some of our team members had and what we use to、um, study Japanese before coming to Japan. So, first of all,、um, I would like to、um, introduce a little bit about myself. Now, my name is Rebecca. I was originally from Taiwan and I was born. Born in the United States. So, my nat native language would be Mandarin and English. So, for a lot of us,、um, I think kanji would be a very big problem for、um, English speakers who actually want to learn Japanese. So, for me, I'm kind of like cheating, but not exactly. But、uh, I think I did have an easier time comparing to a lot of us because I had the Mandarin background. But first of all, I would like to know like, what kinds of、um, Japanese culture that you guys like. So, comment below. Let Let us know and we can actually talk about a little bit in, in depth next time. So, I would like to talk a little bit about myself first to let you guys know how I started to learn Japanese and how I end up in actually working in Japan as well. So,、um, I started to learn Japanese when I was 12 years old, when I was in elementary school in Taiwan. Since Taiwan does have a Pretty, did have a pretty big population who likes Japanese culture back in the days. So I actually started to learn Japanese because I was very crazy about a Japanese drama called Gokusen. I think a lot of us know the drama and we all know that there are multiple seasons. And I started from the second one, and that's how actually I started to like Japanese, and that's how I ended up being interested in Japan. And、um, later on, I started to learn it by myself for、um, almost 10 years, and I started to take classes when I was in comedy college when I went back to the US. So、um, I had experience for、um, learning Japanese for more than 10 years, but most of the time I was studying by myself. So I think I do have some、um, tips that can definitely help you guys when you're、um, studying by yourself at home. And、uh, what am I doing right now is、um, I am a content creator at the company. And、um, before that, I was actually a career advisor for Japanese engineers. So I basically I basically only use Japanese at work almost more than a year, and that was how I wouldn't want to say how good I was at Japanese, but I just wanted to let you guys know I am fluent in Japanese and I'm okay with typing in Japanese while listening as well. So, first of all, we do have a questionnaire for our 13 members at our team. So, first of all,、uh, we do have four tips from the questionnaire that most of us did use and we, what we think that would be very helpful and very useful to. Um, learn Japanese at home. And the first of them would be watching Japanese drama. I think most of us do have a hard time finding Japanese drama online when you're living in the United States. But、um, from my experience, I think learning through drama is a great experience because you know you don't only get to know the language, but you also get to know the culture as well. And the、um, Japanese that are used in dramas are usually very casual and very useful during everyday conversation. Unless you are watching something that's maybe like a legal kind of Japanese drama. That maybe you're not going to use at home. But、um, most of the、um, office drama or even the school dramas are very、um, likely to be useful as well. And while watching Japanese drama, I think a lot of us would、um, choose to put on English subtitles or whatever subtitles that you use for、um, native language. But、um, when I started to learn Japanese,、um, a lot of my teachers or friends around me told me that I should definitely use Japanese subtitles. So it would be very hard at first, but you can just like stop it when you need to you know, listen to it again or you when you have to Google it. And then that's the time that you're actually getting to learn new words and new expressions.、Um, second of the all t i p was. Be making Japanese friends or、um, having a Japanese boyfriend and girlfriend, or girlfriend actually, or like what? Ever partner, it is so.、Um, that's also one of the top listed、um, tips that we have for you guys because, same as any languages, when you're, while you're learning it, it's very important to get to use it、um, on a daily basis. Even if your Japanese is not as fluent or if it's you just started to use it, I think it's very important. We think it's like the most important part to actually use it as a living language rather than just like you know, watching through the TV or just read all kinds of tips online. 
So uh, we would definitely re recommend you guys to know Jap um, get to know some Japanese people around your community, at your school, or even like join a student association at your um, college. Um, that's what I did when I was um, studying at UCLA. I was at the Japanese Student Association and that was how I get to learn Japanese and how I get to practice Japanese on a daily basis because I was hanging out with um, most of the Japanese students and I did have some Japanese boyfriends before as well. So that's why we always say that making a um, partner from the language usually is the best way to practice one language. So um, I'm not saying you're going to use them, but um, yeah, you know, it's actually the most probably the fastest way to learn a language in my opinion. And the third one would be um, listening to Japanese songs. It's also one of the very um, popular options and I think listening to songs um, are probably something that's very efficient especially while you're commuting or if you're going to so let's say you're commuting going to work you're going to school or you're even like at home doing something you're doing your errand doing your housework you can definitely listen to some Japanese songs I would say on um, Apple music there are very um, there are a lot of Japanese songs and also Spotify as well but you can definitely also look through some Japanese songs on YouTube they do usually have the lyrics on it as well so you can take a look at the lyrics and that would actually be something else I will talk about, um, talk a little bit about later on as well. The fourth one would be reading Japanese books. So it would be a little bit harder than most of the above options because you will actually probably have to learn some kanji before that but if you're a little bit advanced in Japanese already but you want to improve your kanji level we think that reading Japanese books or even like poems are probably the fastest way to um, build up your kanji inventory in that way but you definitely will need to maybe like prepare a note a notebook for it or a memo pad for it to memo down all the words that you don't know the meaning you don't know how to read it like as for myself because i do have a mandarin background i most likely can guess what does it mean like what does the kanji mean but a lot like much of the time i don't know how to read it so that's why i have a um i use a memo um, application on my phone so i, I get to um, memo down all the time and I get to look at through doing commuting. So these are the four tips from our questionnaire and the last one would be the one from me and this is a very tricky one because it would be a little bit harder for a lot of us but I think um, when I was learning Japanese and um, without any help from any teacher or taking any classes I actually had a Japanese blog. Um, I used to write, write like blogs in Jap Japanese without any help and plus my Japanese wasn't that good at the moment as well. So the grammar, if I would actually look into my Japanese blog back in the days, I think the grammar would be probably like all over the place and the vocabulary is probably wrong and it just probably doesn't sound right. But I just, I don't know, I was very passionate about what I liked before, which was maybe Johnny's and I used to like some Visual K as well. So I was very passionate about the bands, the idols. So I really wanted to express how much I love them. That's why I had a Japanese blog back in the days. So that's actually like a, um, I would say a hybrid tips because um, if you can find something that we really love about Japanese culture and write them in blogs or even just like use Twitter and tweet about them, I think that would be also another really good practice for um, writing in Japanese as well. Um, above are the five tips that we have for you guys to study Japanese at home or during this pandemic and you don't have to come to Japan but before if you're actually thinking coming to Japan we would definitely recommend you guys to do some of this preparation at home and then um, get to know some of the Japanese culture through the Japanese drama get to know more kanji through Japanese novels and also um, get to actually write in Japanese with your blog or Twitter and lastly I think um, that actually applies to learning all kinds of languages even if you're not super good at it you're not advanced you're not you think you're not fluent yet um, it is the most the most important part to actually learn language will definitely be more uh, not afraid of making mistake and definitely try your best to put yourself in the environment and just to, like be more confident in like learning a, a new languages because some people are not interested in learning new languages so you should definitely be proud of yourself that you are t currently um, trying something new and going out of your comfort zone so um, yeah, let, um, please do comment below and let us know what kind of content that you guys would like to know the next time or if you would like to have a more detailed um, drama list that we want to recommend to you guys we can definitely try to find some uh, Japanese drama on Netflix and some of the recommendations that we have for you uh, in the future episodes as well please stay in touch subscribe and press the thumbs up button and we also have a we expect guides online uh, please do um, take a look thank you guys and uh, we hope to see you soon